In this presentation, a 3 mm oblique shortening osteotomy will be performed on the ulna shaft using the LCP Ulna Osteotomy System 2.7. The objectives are to identify the clinical indications, to introduce the principles of the LCP Ulna Osteotomy System 2.7, to show the patient position and approach, and perform the oblique shortening osteotomy and stabilization with a 2.7 LCP ulna osteotomy plate. The indications for a shortening osteotomy are primary ulnar impaction syndrome, isolated or concomitant degenerative tears of the triangular fibrocartilage complex, TFCC, or degenerative lunotriquetral tears and secondary ulnar impaction syndrome, caused by post-traumatic relative overlength of the ulna in a malunited distal radius fracture, or growth disturbance of the radius following a physial injury. Complete preoperative radiographic assessment and planning are essential especially in cases of secondary impaction. This 56-year-old female sustained a fracture of her distal radius four years ago and complains about ulnar-sided wrist pain that did not respond to implant removal or conservative therapy. The clinical examination reveals a painful ulnocalpa impaction test. Radiologically, a positive ulnar variance of 1.5 mm can be observed. The MRI shows a large central TFC tear. Therefore, an ulnocarpal decompression is indicated a shortening by 3 mm in order to create a slightly negative ulnar variance is planned. In cases of primary impaction, a shortening by 2.5 to 3 mm will reduce the ulnocarpal load by more than 75%. In cases of primary impaction, shortening by more than 4 mm should be avoided. The low-profile, angular-stable ulnar osteotomy plates have rounded edges and tapered ends to minimize risk of soft tissue irritation. Stable fixation is achieved with 2.7 mm locking screws and standard cortex screws. The plates and screws are available in stainless steel or titanium alloy. The system is designed for transverse or oblique osteotomies. There are parallel saw blades for either transverse or oblique osteotomy cuts. The saw blades have a spacer that holds the parallel blades apart during the osteotomy. The saw blades are available for 2, 2.5, 3, 4 and 5 mm shortening. The saw blades for oblique osteotomies must have less distance between the blades to result in the same amount of shortening. Drill templates are available as an aid in pre-drilling the plate fixation holes before the osteotomy cut, resulting in an anatomical reduction of the osteotomy and automatic closing of the osteotomy gap when the screws are inserted, and to ensure correct rotational alignment. Make sure to correctly orientate the drill template according to the etchings, distal and proximal. The saw guide can be mounted for an easier start of the 45 degree oblique osteotomy cut. The two-part combi plate holes allow four different screw placement options. A cortex lag screw for use in oblique osteotomies, a neutral cortex screw, an eccentric cortex screw resulting in axial compression at the osteotomy site, or a locking screw. The plate has a symmetric design with six or eight holes. Place the patient in a supine position with the forearm positioned on a hand table in full supination and the shoulder in 90 degrees abduction. The use of a tourniquet and magnifying loops is recommended. Make a longitudinal incision to approach the palmar side of the ulna. The ulnar nerve should be protected by the flexor muscle bulk. The LCP ulnar osteotomy plate 2.7 should be placed on the flat palmar surface of the ulna. It is recommended to place the plate between the distal and the middle third of the ulnar shaft. Identify the ulnar styloid process. 
the incision starts 6 to 7 centimeters proximally. Make an 8 centimeter long incision slightly palmer to the ulnar crest. Use the soft tissue spreaders and a bone lever to hold the incision open. Apply a second bone lever to retract the pronator quadratus muscle, which may have to be detached proximally. Place the plate on the palmar surface of the ulna, just proximal of the pronator quadratus muscle, and check that it lies flush on the bone. It is recommended to place the plate between the distal and the middle third of the ulna shaft. Remove any protruding bone with the oscillating saw. Recheck the fit of the plate to the bone. The instruments needed to prepare for the osteotomy are the drill template for 3mm shortening, two 2.0mm K wires with drill tip, length 100mm, one 2.0mm K wire with drill tip, length 150mm, and the saw guide. Place the drill template on the ulna and check that it lies flush. Make sure to correctly orientate the drill template according to the etchings, distal and proximal. If the drill guide is standing off the bone at one side, this indicates that the plate has to be overbent in the middle accordingly. Insert a 100mm long K wire through the most distal hole in the drill template into the bone bicortically. Inserting the shorter K wire first avoids constraints when inserting the 150mm long K wire. The laser markings on the K wire can be used as a guide for the insertion depth. The first marking indicates an insertion depth of 10mm. The second marking, 15mm. Align the plate with the shaft. Insert a 100mm long K wire bicortically through the proximal hole of the drill template. Insert a 150mm K wire through the second distal hole in the drill template. Move the bone levers to protect the soft tissue below and behind the ulna during the osteotomy. Attach the saw guide to the drill template. Choose the appropriate parallel saw blade for the oblique osteotomy. Be sure that the saw blade and the drill template are intended for the same shortening. Before starting the osteotomy, ensure the saw blade spacer is in the correct position away from the coupling part. Align the saw blade with the oblique parallel markings on the drill template. Do not shift the direction of the saw blade once the osteotomy has started. To advance the saw blade completely, the saw guide should be removed. Slide the drill template away from the bone to avoid collision with the saw blade. Continue the osteotomy. Avoid applying excessive force. Irrigation should be used to avoid excessive heat. To avoid fracture spikes, continue the cut completely through the bone. The bone slice is now loose. Remove the drill template. Slide the plate over the K wires and down to the bone. Correct plate positioning is important. Always slide the oblong combi holes of the plate over the most distal and proximal K wires. The instruments needed to insert cortex screws are the Universal Drill Guide 2.7, the Drill Bit 2.0mm, the Drill Bit 2.7mm, the Depth Gauge, the self-holding T8 star drive screwdriver shaft and the handle with quick coupling. Remove the K-wire located distal to the osteotomy. 
measure the screw length with the depth gauge. Insert the appropriate length 2.7mm Cortex screw with the self-holding T8 star drive screwdriver shaft and the handle with quick coupling. Remove the second distal K-wire. Measure the screw length with the depth gauge. Insert the appropriate length 2.7mm Cortex screw but do not fully tighten at this point. Before removing the proximal K-wire, fix the plate in position with the reduction forceps with ball tip placed into the most proximal plate hole. After measuring the depth, insert the appropriate length 2.7mm Cortex screw. This screw is located in the eccentric position of the oblong combi hole. Tightening this screw will apply compression to the osteotomy. Remove the forceps. The small pointed reduction forceps can be used to align the two fragments. Fully tighten the distal and proximal screws. The final cortex screw is applied as a lag screw. Drill the thread hole with the 2.0mm drill bit through the 2.0 end of the universal drill guide. Overdrill the near cortex with the 2.7mm drill bit through the 2.7 end of the drill guide. Measure the screw length with the depth gauge. Insert the appropriate 2.7mm cortex screw and fully tighten to apply additional compression to the osteotomy. The instruments needed to insert locking screws are the LCP drill sleeve 2.7 with scale, the drill bit 2.0mm with marking, the depth gauge, the self-holding T8 star drive screwdriver shaft, and the handle with quick coupling. Screw the LCP drill sleeve into the most distal plate hole. Use the 2.0mm drill bit to drill the screw hole. The screw length can be measured using the marking on the drill bit and the drill sleeve. Remove the drill sleeve. The length of screw needed can be checked using the depth gauge. Insert the appropriate length 2.7mm locking screw using the self-holding T8 star drive screwdriver shaft and the handle with quick coupling. In cases of extremely dense bone and increased resistance inhibiting the advancement of the screws, remove the screw and use a tap before driving the locking screws home. Insert a 2.7mm locking screw in the most proximal plate hole. The instruments needed for final tightening of locking screws are the short self-holding star drive screwdriver shaft 2.4, the torque limiter 0.8 newton meter, and the handle for torque limiters. The torque limiter prevents over-tightening and ensures that the locking screws are securely locked into the plate. Here is the finished model with a 45 degree osteotomy stabilized with a 6 hole 2.7 LCP ulnar osteotomy plate using cortex and locking screws. The post-operative x-rays show that the plate is positioned correctly, the osteotomy gap is closed, and the screws are of the correct length. This presentation has shown the clinical indications, 
the principles of the LCP ulnar osteotomy system 2.7, the patient position and approach, and the oblique shortening osteotomy and stabilization with a 2.7 LCP ulnar osteotomy plate.